Hello and welcome back to this session. In the previous session, we have downloaded and installed all the softwares required for our internship. Now, in this session, we'll be getting started with STM32 CubeMX. Launch CubeMX by double clicking its icon. Now let's explore this CubeMX software. So this is the welcome screen where in the left side, there is a link for existing projects that I have already created using this software. In the middle, there is an option to create a new project. In order to create a new project, we have three options. Number one is access to MCU selector. This is the option that will help to find the MCU that you want to create a project for. In the previous session, I had discussed that the target board is based on STM32 F401 RE Cortex M4 MCU. So if you know the name of the MCU, then you can directly go to MCU selector. Next one is access to board selector. Like the target board that we will be using in our internship is Nucleo F401 RE. So if you know the name of the board, then you can directly access to board selector. And the third option is access to cross selector. This option is generally for those controllers which are an alternative to other manufacturer. Like someone is working with PI or microchip and he is looking for the alternative to that particular controller in the ST portfolio, then he or she can access to cross select. So in our case, we know both the name of the MCU as well as the board. The third window, which is manage software and installation. There are two links available in this window. The very first is check for updates. The CubeMX software and other software packages that are installed in this CubeMX can be updated from here. You can directly click for check for updates. And if there is an update available, it will automatically install. Next is install and remove. This option is used to install or remove the embedded software package. Click on install and remove button. It will open the window for embedded software package manager. Here are the list of controllers family offered by ST. We are concerned about STM32 F4. Click on this arrow and you will find the driver packages with the version number. I have the latest version already installed. So for you guys, just select this package, click from local and go to the path where the zip file for the cube F4 package is located. In my case, it was in download. This is the firmware package STM32 cube firmware F4 version 1250 zip just open this zip file and it will start installing this package once the package is completely installed you will see a green color box in front of this package that was not in the earlier scene click on refresh and close so we are done with setting up the environment for our target board we have installed the software packages that is stm32 cube f4 if you are a beginner for those who are getting started with cube mx they can directly go to help and click on help and there opens a PDF guide for using the STM32 CubeMX in which the steps to create project related to various peripherals are given. So you can refer this user guide if you are new to this CubeMX. Now we can go to board selector option. This is the pop-up window for the board selector. You can see the three options available in the tab also. MCU selector, board selector or cross selector. There is not much difference. If you go to MCU selector, you will find the name of the MCUs. If you go to board selector, then you will get the specific boards. If you go to cross selector, then you have to go for the vendors and that targeted controller. So we are not concerned with this. Just come back to board selector. Now in this search box, Type the name of our target board that is Nucleo F401RE. You can see in the list that the target board has been selected. Now in order to start the project, you can directly double click here or you can just click start project in the top right corner. Once you click the start project, it will ask to initialize all peripherals with their default mode. Click yes. So this is the MCU. This particular window is called as pinout and configuration wizard. As you can see, the MCU is enabled with some pins and peripherals because we have click yes for the default initialization. If you want to clear all the pinouts, just go to this drop down pinout menu and select clear pinouts. Click yes. So this is the complete blank MCU without any configuration or initialization. 
If we see in the left hand side, there is a list of peripherals available in two tab that is categories as well as A to Z. In categories, the peripherals are grouped in terms of categories like analog, timers, connectivity that protocols used for connecting remote devices, multimedia related peripherals, computing peripherals, middleware available for this particular MCU. If you click on A to Z tab, then all the peripheral will be arranged in alphabetical order. Now let's say we want to enable a GPIO. So you can go to any pins and click on to see the functions associated with particular pins. In the Cortex MCU manufactured by ST, each pin can perform multiple function as they are multiplexed with various peripherals. So if you want to enable a pin as a GPIO, you can click GPIO output. And once the pin is configured as GPIO output, the pin color will be changed to green. This green color indicates that peripheral is functional. You can look other pins. These are gray in color. That means they are not configured and they are in their reset mode. Few pins are yellow in color. This indicates that these pins are enabled but for limited use. Now let's enable some peripheral. Let's suppose I am enabling USART. As soon as you select a peripheral, a configuration window opens side by side and you can enable the USART in various modes. So I am enabling as asynchronous. Once the mode is selected, a configuration window in the downward offers you the parameter settings like baud rate, word length, parity, stop bits, data direction and many more related to the particular peripheral. This pinout configuration offer a special function like if you have enabled this pin for user but as per your requirement, this pin is dedicated to some other function. Let's say this pin is connected to a sensor or any other output device. So we cannot enable it as user. So we have an option to select alternate pins for that. So in order to see the alternate pins, just go to the pins, press the control and click. If you click the button, you will see the alternate pin flashing in the MCU. So this is the alternate pins for USART1 transmit line. So you can enable this. This pin will be free as it is connected to some other dedicated device. Similarly, for PA10, you can see PB7 is the alternate option. So you can configure the alternate option for USART1. Another important thing, like if you have enabled this pin as GPIO output and you want to enter a name for this pin, just right click on this pin click enter user label you can label it as per your convenience let's say this pin is connected to buzzer so i can rename it as buzzer so similarly for various peripheral all the configuration will be appeared side by side if you want to see the configuration together just you can click on this system view the system view offers the complete peripherals enabled and their configuration like by default sys is enabled rcc is enabled nvic is enabled gpio is enabled as we have enabled just right now so if you click on gpio then you will go to gpio configuration like we have configured pb4 as buzzer pin so the parameters related to GPIO is mentioned here like output level, the mode, whether it is push pull mode or open drain mode, pull up or pull down you can configure from here and the output level or user level you can enter from here also and the shortcuts that I just explained right now. Next tab is clock configuration tab. This tab offers you the configuration of clock using a clock tree. In this tree, uh, there are two sources for external clock that is LSE and HSE. LSE stand for low speed external and HSE stand for high speed external. So the nuclear board contains internal crystal. Therefore, it is configured as LSE RC. That means the 32 kilohertz oscillator connected to MCU and that can be configured to provide the system clock. There is a multiplexer to pass on the system clock from different sources. There is a phase lock loop to multiply or divide the input frequency to achieve the desired output frequency. Next tab is project manager tab. In the project manager tab, it controls the basic settings of the project such as name of the project, let's say test and the project location wherever you want to save the project. You can directly click on browse and go for the various drive in your system and click and select open to enter that location. Next is application structure. There are two structure offered by this CubeMX. Depending upon the peripherals enabled in the pinouts and configuration wizard, 
you can select the application structure like if you're working with gpio adc usart i2c these protocols can be generated using basic application structure there is a option to generate main or not if you want to generate the main function just don't check this next is tool chain folder location we cannot modify this it's automatically detected next is tool chain ide if you click on the scroll down menu you will see the number of tool chain ide supported by the cubemx very first is ewa arm that that is embedded workbench for arm next is mdk arm that is the tool chain for keel microvision next is system workbench for stm32 it's an eclipse based ide next is true studio next one is stm32 cube ide that we have already installed another one is make file or other tool chain supported for generating the code so we can go with stm32 cube id next is linker setting this offers the control over heap size and stack size you can modify this as per your requirement or the peripherals enabled next is mcu and firmware package remember the cube f4 package that we have added cubemx using the install and remove application so this is the firmware packages used for generating the code and this is the default firmware location if you look at the left hand side you will find other two tab one is code generator in the code generator tab there are few options to control the mcu packages and embedded software packs there are three options copy all used libraries or copy only the necessary library files always select the middle option that is only the necessary library files to optimize the size next is generated file generate peripheral initialization as a pair of dot o h files per peripheral if you check this option then the code will generated in the form of dot object file and header file pair backup previously generated files when regenerating if you want to backup the previously generated files while regenerating then you can click this checkbox for now you can just leave it unchecked these two options are important keep user code when regenerating like in cubemx if we generate code then some code structure will be generated and suppose we have to modify some peripheral and we have added some line of codes in the generated code then if we regenerate that user code will be lost so if you check this box then the user code will be available after regenerating the code next is delete previously generated files when not regenerated this is also for the same operation like if we have modified some peripherals and if we have disabled some peripherals and regenerated the code then the peripherals that we have deleted can be removed automatically from the generated code structure next is hl setting that is hardware abstraction layer first it set all frequencies as analog to optimize the power consumption as the name suggests that it is used for optimizing the power consumption enable full assert this option allow to enable full assertion of controller operation next is advanced setting you can select the libraries associated with particular peripheral like in usart if you are working with hl libraries then you can select hl or you can go for low level library for now we don't need to change anything in this setting so we are done with project manager clock configuration pinout configuration now everything is fine so we can go for generate code if you click on generate code it will start generating the user source code once the code is generated you will get an window with open folder open project option and close option you can close it for right now because we have to look for next tab that is tools this tools offers the calculation of power consumption if you are working on a project and you want to calculate the battery life or the power consumption by your mcu you can configure this window for your particular use this is the mcu that we have selected go for the vdd selection that means what type of voltage supply you are using next is type of a battery information notes you can enable run mode stop mode to check whether the power consumption is optimum for your application or not such as i have enabled run mode with 3.3 voltage supply with this megahertz frequency for this duration then the power consumption in milliampere will be 2 point something for this duration and after this duration i enter to stop mode and for 0.9 millisecond the controller is in stop mode so in stop mode the power consumption reduces to zero so the overall average consumption can be calculated and displayed over here so similarly you can prepare your criteria and situation favorable to your application everyone loves to write codes but most of us avoid creating documentation for that project 
so stm32 qmx offer an easy way of documentation so that you can document all the project detail the configuration done using this software you can go to file and click on generate report you can go to open folder this is the pdf file for test project that we have created if you open you can see all the documentation for the configuration that we have done using qmx so description number one that is project the name of project the board name generated using which qmx version and on which date you can go for the mcu detail mcu series is f4 mcu line is f401 what is the name f401 re package pin number you can go for each and every configuration pinout configuration we have enabled pb4 as gpio and labeled as buzzer we have enabled use art one so alternate function these are the pins configuration listed in a tabular form this is clock tree that whatever we have configured name of the project project folder tool chain id the firmware packages code generator setting that whatever we have enabled or disabled everything is listed in this document so this is a very important feature of cubemx that will be very helpful for all of us now you can open this project file this will opens the stm32 cube ide because we have selected the tool chain for the code generation now for the very first time when stm32 cube id launch it will ask for the workspace location you can give the location where you would like to save the cube id project you can use this as default that is the default location or you can browse as per your convenience like i am saving workspace for cube id and check this box so that it will use this as a default now you can click on launch so this is the stm32 cube id window opens in editor mode with the project we have created right now that is test so this is the folder structure generated by the cubemx now stm32 cube ide is integrated with cubemx itself so if you are using stm32 cube ide then you don't have to use QMX separately. You can create your configuration part in this IDE itself. How to create a project using Cube IDE, we will see in upcoming lectures. For now, we can just explore the folder structure. The very first is includes. These are the include file, files and folders. Drivers, drivers generated for the particular family of controller that is F4. CMSYS that is controller specific SRC is the source file in which your main.c is there in which you will write your code other supporting files are also generated startup file is there in the include section the respective header files for that source file generated are available here this is the linker file this is the cubemx file that is .ioc extension this is the pdf report that we have generated and this is the text format of the report now go to main.c and scroll down and you will see the configuration that we have done using cubemx we have enabled the gpio we have enabled usart and we have configured the clock so this three configuration is automatically imported here with separate function you can see here usart1 you can see here gpio and the name that we have given to that particular pin was buzzer so that is also imported here and these are the settings of gpio parameters so for now we are not writing any code we will do this in our hands-on lecture so that's all for this session see you in next lecture